All right, well, today I'm down in uh, Dummerston, Vermont. I'm at the, the Stone Trust, the campus for the Stone Trust. It seems to be located at an apple farm. It's a really, it's a really nice location. I did a practice day in preparation for a uh, certification test to become a level one certified dry stone waller. And um, yeah, so today the Stone Trust just kind of replicated the conditions that this test would take place in and uh yeah just built a short section of a, a six foot section of freestanding wall and i i think i passed i don't know um there's, there's some room for improvement but i, I just i, I want to get certified before i go to england in september because i just would like to demonstrate that i have some ability you know according to a metric that they understand um so yeah, we'll come over here. I so think I guess we'll talk real quick about the um, the components of one of these dry stone walls. Um, you know, starting at the bottom, you have the the foundation stones. Obviously, they're the first ones on the ground, and then you go up. You know, they tend to to course out the stones throughout the wall there. Pretty nice look. And then uh, you get about halfway up into the wall and you'll see there are these, these stones that stick out kind of proud of the face of the wall. These are called through stones. And they, um, they extend through both sides of the wall, tying each face together. It's a very uh, critical uh, aspect for, um, you know, for structural integrity. And then you keep keep running up, keep coursing up through. You get to the top, put on what's called a cover band. You know, these, these capstones, again, you know, they extend from face to face. And, the, you know, they'll tie the two faces together. Pretty good for um, structural integrity. And then, you know, what's kind of unique to this style of walling is the... Uh, these copestones stood up like books on a bookshelf and um, you know they just put a tremendous amount of weight on top of the wall and really you know really hold it hold it together um, you know because they're all kind of leaning on each other you know they they kind of collectively put a lot of pressure on themselves and then by extension onto the rest of the wall and they do a good job of of holding it together. Yep. So a level one test is just a straight section of wall. Level two, I guess, you know, includes one of these cheek ends here. You gotta build up a corner. Um, and level three, I guess, incorporates more, uh, more complicated features. And there's some really fantastic examples of stone here on this campus. I'm gonna walk around and talk about those real quick. So, this is a really unique style of wall. The instructor here was telling me that this, you know, the style of wall, the bottom of this wall anyway, with these vertical, vertical stones, I guess is, it's a, typically found in um, Wales, Scotland, Ireland. And uh, yeah, it's a very, different beast I think it you know I think it probably generally you know the physics are the same as those coke stones you know the vertical stones are are leaning on each other kind of like books in a bookshelf and exerting a lot of pressure that way um, then uh, the instructor was telling me that this you know this top section of wall was just kind of a This was supposed to start off as a Galloway wall or something, and then it it turned into this. The gentleman who built this, Jared Flynn, is well. He's got a lot of pieces here. He's a really remarkable mason or dry stone waller. And I guess this is just the style that he was experimenting with. It's unique. Here we go little plaque that I was supposed to read before starting this video but I didn't um, yeah, some explanation there 
All right, and over here, it's just a, uh, I call it a single wall. And as you can see, well, maybe you can't, I don't know, but you know, this wall is just single stones stacked up. Um, yeah, these are pretty big, pretty big boulders. I think machine set by and large. Um, it's really simple. It's really primitive. It's also not easy masonry uh, or you know dry stone walling. And there, <laughs> that that community is really uh, caught up on the differences, hung up on the differences between masonry and dry stone walling. They don't recognize the overlap between the two trades. Um, anyway, these single walls. In my experience aren't very easy to build um, this is just like a really remarkable uh, example of one uh, again this was built by by Jared Flynn now if we come down here we have a slate sphere in process in progress This is obviously a, a really complex build. I don't know anything. I don't know anything about this project, but but it's in process here. Down here. This is another piece by Jared Flynn, I guess. This is a uh, you know, a wall built into a slope. Pretty steep slope you can see he's got got the courses running level running back into the into the hill you know, he's got everything there's a little cheek end down there looks like somebody else built a wall in front of it um, coping stones it's interesting about this as you can see he you know these foundation stones he set out you know they're proud of the wall presumably to help distribute some weight um, yeah again you know that's just like a really remarkable piece using quite a different you know varieties of stone here those you know those foundation stones I'm pretty sure they come from a quarry I've gotten a lot of wall stone from it's now uh, Black River quarries used to be Quimby Mountain Stone he's got these uh, granite through throughs or through stones there's a lot of other, you know, ledgy, um, mica schist, and then that, you know, those ledgy uh, capstones. I think those are probably also mica schist. Oh, and then, you know, and then, the, you know, the rest of this wall is just glacial till, you know, small pieces that have been tumbled and left in fields. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic example of masonry right there. Got a few sets of steps. For Seth. Yeah, he participated. He was my, my neighbor during that, that thing. Now this is a remarkable piece. I think this is a uh, Jared, Jared's uh, masterpiece, I guess. I, I don't know what they, I gotta seek out some more clarification on that, but this is a, the example that he built to get a master craftsman certification and it's uh, it's complex you know there's a lot of batter on this corner it's probably two inches per foot batter would be you know how much a wall leans in how out of plumb most of these walls are uh, you know a dry stone wall you know typically leans in if I'm building a retaining wall, it's like, you know, if it's nice ledgy stone, then it'd be about an inch for every foot. Field stone, maybe two inches. I think much more than that would be, well, kind of excessive, actually. Um, yeah, he's got these granite, granite pieces up here. Those copes going all the way down, beautifully dressed. Everything's all planed out. 
nice little arch. You can see the through, you know, he left the, the throughs proud. Honestly, I don't know, you know, why. I don't know if there's a, a reason to do that other than to just not take the time to trim them down. But on a piece like this, I don't think time's really the the issue. Probably just left them long to uh, to demonstrate that they're in there. Yeah, this is uh, this is remarkable masonry for dry stone walling. And then we have other other features built in like this sheepfold. I think is what he called this or sheep style, S squeeze style. I don't know. I think humans. The point is. Humans can fit through there, but sheep cannot. Because you got to bear in mind that this craft was developed in an agricultural setting, squeeze style, I think. Because I think the instructor was referring to these as a as a step style. I don't think sheep could, can negotiate that. Perhaps goats can. Well, goats can for sure. Another uh, cheek end. There's another little arch. It's a pretty interesting little corner right here. Nice rounded off corner. I built one wall like that. I built one wall kind of similar to that. I didn't go like a full radius on the corner. I, um, instead of having perfectly square edges, I cut like a four inch radius or something, or maybe I almost guarantee you I used like a coffee cup or some, some type of round object that I found in my truck and use that as a template for cutting a radius. And we got some steps. We've all seen stone steps. It's pretty good. You know, it's just the setting is, is phenomenal. I think it's an apple farm. I, don't, I, I mean, I don't know if it's a commercial farm or if it's more of a tourist, tourist thing. I guess this is the retaining wall section. Well, except I'm looking at a freestanding wall right now. There's a big six footer, seven footer maybe. It's a pretty formidable little structure. Just don't climb on it. So I won't do that today. Great at arch, I bet that was a uh, fire pit bought from Swenson Granite that they set up on edge there. Two sets of throughs because the wall's so tall. Cover band, copes. Some other more, you know, this more unique, like I think they, they called this a Galloway style. And I can't speak to the uh, the benefits of that, of that style. Maybe it's aesthetic or maybe, you know, maybe there's some structural function that that forms. It's you know more of those vertical or herringbone type type wall. Got some some vertical structures here. This seems to be just a regular old retaining wall right here, except with the the coping stones. It's a nice retaining wall, that's for sure. You can see just different styles of masonry all throughout all throughout this thing. Oh, I saw something. Saw something kind of neat over here. Looks like some big well tiles set up on their sides with some features built in. Oh wow, look at this. These are really remarkable. All right, so there are some cobblestones building up that little section. It's, it's pretty nice floating bench, some copes. Now look at this uh, slate herringbone. That's really remarkable. That That's some tedious stuff right there. That's beautiful. There's 
some like bluestone cobbles, I guess. They were probably sawn and tumbled. More slate. It's really, that's, a, that's just a phenomenal pattern right there. Probably roofing shingles actually, come to think of it. Another floating bench. Yeah. Yeah, so I had a good day down here. Didn't uh, wear sunscreen. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to pay for that. Um, yeah, it's just another fun, great event put on by the Stone Trust. And, uh, you know, the more I, I work with these guys, the more excited I get about, about working with them. They're so welcoming you know for, i mean first of all it's a wealth of knowledge down here it's like it's some of yeah it's just some absolute authorities you know on this particular element of the trade are here and uh you know they it's all taught according to the the dry stone wallers association standards and um yeah i mean that's they know what they're talking about so wealth of information down here and such a, a deep pool of enthusiasm it's just it's so you know it's really refreshing just to kind of be around people who are just so so passionate about the stone you know I think I don't know I probably mentioned about how I got a bit burnt out with masonry previously but um, but you know buying the quarry kind of reinvigorated uh, my enthusiasm for the trade and uh, and so, you know, being down here too, you know, like the enthusiasm's just, it's contagious. And uh, so, yeah, I had a great time. And they're, they're very welcoming too, you know, like these, these workshops are available to absolutely anybody who, with even the slightest interest in, the, uh, in working with stone. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's really, it's enjoyable work. You know, I think it'd be an enjoyable hobby too if you have if you have the right acreage with the right stone on on the property. You know, if you took if you took one of these workshops down here, you would uh, you'd be in pretty good shape for learning how to um, yeah, build walls, improve your property, make a nice nice setting, or you know, increase the value of your property too. So, if you're interested in stone, look up the Stone Trust. I'm gonna maybe get you right there. Put some information, contact information for them. Uh, next week I'm gonna be working on a like a volunteer day, a volunteer wall. Actually, I don't even know what we're building, but that's gonna be up in Barrie, Vermont, at the uh, the uh, Vermont Granite Museum. You know the Stone Trust does a lot up there. Probably gonna bring over a few blocks from my quarry, just as a offering. And then on May 22nd, I got to take that test to try to become a level one certified dry stone waller. And, uh, you know, I learned a few things that I can prove on today. And uh, I think there are a few other little, little walls I can maybe tinker on between now and then to just get some more practice. Even though I've been doing it for, <laughs> for 19 years, I, you know, a little more practice wouldn't hurt a thing. And uh, yeah, so hopefully I can pass that test without uh, a big issue. And then when I go to England, I can be a good representative for the uh, the American walling community. Or I can try to be. I don't know. I tend to shoot from the hip sometimes with statements. So maybe, maybe I'm not the, the best delegate. But thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, we've got some more stuff coming, more content coming, I guess. So, so stay tuned. Thank you.